This video is going to look at how we can use JShell introduced to the Java 9 to quickly test the logic in a read evaluate print loop. We're going to look at how we can create variables, methods, and classes, and the various keywords that are made available to us within JShell. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more weekly videos on Java, subscribe to the channel. So I'm just starting in this new folder I've created called Java 9. And now to open the actual terminal for JShell, we just have to type JShell and ensure that we have Java 9 installed within our machine. And to begin, we're going to start defining some variables, some methods, and also some classes within JShell that will allow us to play about with the Java language just from the terminal itself. So firstly, I'm going to define an insert and I'm going to call it X. And we can see once we hit enter, it will then tell us just slightly above that X equals 10. We can then use this variable called x by printing it out into the console. So I'll be doing system out, print lin, and then I can pass in the value of x. And we can see down below that 10 has now been printed. We are also able to change the value of a variable. So for example, we might want to change the value of x to 12. And now we can see that x now equals 12. And if once more I print out the value of x, we can now see the number 12 being printed down below. Next, we're going to look at how we can define different methods within JShell, and we can do that just by typing them out as we would do in a normal IDE. So I can do public void make sound, and let's say we're just doing this for different types of cars. So you can do system out, print line, and we can just have it print the word room. And then if I return this one more time, we can see down below that JShell has now told us that we've created a method called make sound. I can then define our own class. So let's say I want to create a class for a truck. We can do it just as we would in an IDE, so public class truck. And that truck will just have a single method called drive. And then I can close that class one more time and we can see that we've created the class called truck and I can actually create an instance of this truck by doing truck t equals new truck and just using the default constructor. And then I can call this drive method on that truck by doing t.drive. So we can now see truck is driving printed down below just as this method would otherwise be working within our IDE. So, so far we've defined some variables, we've defined a method, and we've defined a class. And we can see all of the commands that we've been typing into JShell by typing forward slash list. And all the keywords and methods that JShell provides us will be executed by using the forward slash and then the keyword uh, sort of pattern within JShell. So from the list, we can see that the first argument we selected was int x equals 10. Then we printed it out. We changed it to 12, printed it out one more time. Then we defined our method called make sound. We defined our class called truck. And then we created a new instance of truck and called the drive method on it. Now, let's say if we wanted to print out the most recent command that we've typed in. So for us, it would be t.drive. We can do this by, do, by passing in forward slash and then the explanation mark and that will call the method tDrive as it says here. Alternatively, we can call one of these key values from our list by typing in forward slash. And then let's say we wanted to print out the value of x one more time, we could just type in the number of four and then down below it will, it will show us what method it's calling which is system out x and then it calls that method and types the number 12. If we want to see all the variables that we've defined within our JShell instance, we just type in forward slash vars and we can see that we have an integer of x equal to 12, and we have a truck t with the hash code of the truck to the right. If we want to see all the methods, then we just type forward slash methods, and we just have that one called make sound. And if we want to see all the classes and the interfaces we've defined, we can do forward slash types. And we just have that single class called truck. Now, if I print out the list one more time, and I want to remove some of these keys that I've defined, I can just type forward slash drop, and then let's say number one, and now it's dropped the variable of x. So now if I type list, we can see that that first variable of x that has been defined has now been dropped. I'm just going to clear the screen by holding down control and then pressing L. 
Now you may be wondering what the default sort of setting is for us within JShell. What packages do we actually have access to? And we can find that out by typing in forward slash and then imports. And we can see that by default, JShell provides us with the IO, the math, net, the concurrent function, and all these other packages from the Java library. So if I were to try to find an instance of a class that doesn't exist within Java, for example, the key factory, JShell will print an error to us saying cannot find symbol class key factory. And that's because we haven't imported it within JShell. So just like we would in an IDE, we can import any kind of library that we would like that we have access to within Java. So we can do import Java security. And now if I try to define this key factory from above, it should be able to create that for us. And we've defined a variable called KF and it points to this instance of the key factory for us. So we're going to take a look at how JShell enables us to define forward referencing. And forward referencing enables us to define variables and methods that have not yet been defined within JShell to then later be used. We can also edit some of the variables, the methods and the classes that we defined earlier before. And I'm going to do that by typing in forward slash and then edit. And just outside of the console, we will have this JShell edit pad that has been created for us using Java Swing. So what we can see within this edit pad is the classes that we've defined and also the methods that we've defined. So here we have this make sound method call. So I'm now going to edit this to print out a variable that we haven't yet defined. So before we have vroom and now I'm just going to type in car brand, which is a variable. I'm now going to hit accept and then exit. And we can see within our JShell, we've, we've modified the method of make sound but it does also tell us that, however, it cannot be invoked until variable car brand is declared. So if I now call make sound, it says attempted to call method make sound, but it can't be invoked until variable car brand is declared. So I'm just going to define that variable and I'm going to make it equal to Mercedes. And now if I call make sound, it types room and then Mercedes. I'm now going to edit this one more time. And within make sound, I'm now going to make a second method call to a new method called make second sound. And of course, this method also hasn't been defined. So if I hit accept and then exit, we can see modified method make sound. However, it cannot be invoked until method make second sound is declared. So let's try to call make sound one more time. And of course it can't do that because the method make second sound hasn't actually been defined. So let's make that method called make second sound. And we've defined that make second sound method. So now if I call make sound, we can see it's printing Vroom Mercedes and then making second sound down below. So we've typed out quite a bit of work within our JShell. We have different types of methods defined. We have different classes such as the truck class. We've defined some variables, but when we leave JShell, it's now going to remove all of this information and all of this work that we've done and it will now be lost. Now there is one way for us to save all of our work and that's by simply saving our current list into a new file. And we can do this by typing forward slash save and then the name of the file that we would like. So let's call this myshell.txt. And then we can exit the JShell by typing forward slash exit or forward slash ex and it will say goodbye to us. Now I'm in this folder called Java 9. If I list out the different files that we have, we can see that we have jaguar.class, which is a Java class I defined earlier before. And then we also have myshell.txt. So if I print out myshell.txt, we can see it has all of the variables and all of the methods and classes that we defined from our previous JShell session. So now I'm going to start JShell one more time. And now if I hit forward slash list, we can see we have nothing printed into our console. However, I'm able to open our previous session by typing forward slash open, 
followed by the name of the file and the location. So because we're already in that Java 9 directory, I just have to type myshell.txt. It will print many errors to us within the JShell console because certain variables and certain methods haven't been defined as it's loading that list up. And now if I type forward slash list, we can now see all of those variables and methods defined just as we would like to. So if I run the make sound method call by doing forward slash 11, we can now see Vroom Mercedes making second sound has now been defined. One last item I'm going to touch on is that we could see that we had a Jaguar class defined within the Java 9 directory, and we are actually able to load our own custom classes within JShell as we would like to use them. So we can do that by typing once again, open, and then jaguar.class. And this will of course be pointing to the exact location of the Jaguar class in the directory that we're in. And now if I want to create a new instance of the Jaguar class, I can now call some of the methods from within that class. And we can see it's printed Jaguar sound into the console. So I'm just going to exit this one more time. And if I just print out that Jaguar class into the console, we can see that it has one method called make sound and it prints Jaguar sound, which is exactly what we had printed up above. So that concludes this tutorial on how we can use JShell, how we can define different variables, methods, and classes, the different type of keywords that we have within JShell, which helps us to list the variables that we've defined and all the methods and all the types and then how we can also save our work into an external file, and how we can also load external files into our JShell, such as this Jaguar class, for us to achieve efficient feedback from our Java logic.